Welcome back to the channel. This is the Earth Science Classroom. This video is on geology and in this video we're looking at sedimentary rocks and their associated depositional environments. So what environments formed each kind of sedimentary rock? This is the Earth Science Classroom. So firstly, a depositional environment is a location on the Earth's surface where any kind of sediment or rocky material or class are being transferred and moved across the Earth's surface and then dropped or deposited at a certain location. This is caused by a lack of energy or the inability for that erosional agent to continue to move the material across the Earth's surface. Now, these erosional agents include anything with water, which is fluvial, anything with wind, which is aeolian, and anything to do with mass, movement, or gravity, which is obviously gravitational forces. So these different environments include any kind of alluvial, which is like basically a movement of material down on the surface, like a mudslide or rockfall, tidal flats, mud flats, lagoons, swamps and marshes, anything to do with rivers and streams and fluvial, anything to do with floodplains, submarine or deep ocean canyons, deep ocean floor, continental shelves, continental rises, coastal plains, some shallow marine or some inland seas or shallow seas, and of course, lakes and ponds, which are called lacustrine or lacustrine. The importance of understanding a depositional environment comes from the understanding of how sedimentary rocks form through sedimentation and lithification. So you have this accumulation of material and the sediment is put down, deposited in a certain location as discussed, like a floodplain or a shallow sea or deep marine ocean floor. Then there's compaction, burial, sedimentation with heat and pressure changing certain minerals into a kind of rocky glue, which will basically cement and form the sediments together and thus making sedimentary rock. So the certain material, the class or sediments that have been deposited are very important because they're going to form the sedimentary rock in that location and also based on the different geologic principles outlined by Steno, Hutton and Lyle. So to work backwards, you find this rock, let's say it's sandstone, we know what kind of environment that sandstone comes from and the composition of sandstone so we know the materials that are being accumulated at that certain environment at that certain time to form that certain rock which is sandstone. So scientists will look at a certain rock and know that due to uniformitarianism, the principle brought forward by Hutton, that the processes that create these rocks today were the same as in the past. So we see a certain sedimentary rock layer. We know that it formed from certain sediments in a certain physical, chemical, and biological way. If there's any index fossils in there or fossils. And we can work backwards to figure out a, its thickness, B, its age, relative or absolute, and also a detailed account of what kind of environment was present in this location to form this rock at that certain time, whether it be a marsh, a swamp, a forest, a inland sea, or a deep sea. We can figure out that the part of the Earth's surface was a certain environment in the past in order to form these rocks. So the appreciation and understanding and interpretation of these cemetery rocks are vitally important for working backwards to gain a timeline and a picture of what happened geologically, tectonically, and even biologically in the past millions of years ago, if not billions of years ago. If you find a layer of conglomerate, conglomerate is a sedimentary rock with large class, large sediments that are basically rounded and smoothed. And the environment that causes or forms this kind of rock is fluvial mass movements and kind of like downhill movement of sediment with high energy and over a long time span because it takes more time to weather and erode the sediments into these rounded shapes, these rounded edges. Breccia is a very similar rock to conglomerate. It has, rather than rounded class and edges, it has sharper angled edges. 
and this is formed due to a lower energy environment with less time and these include alluvial fans, any kind of debris or mass movements, glacial till or any kind of fluvial environment. So we know where these rocks form based on the class and the sediments. So sandstone is a common sedimentary rock formed from sand as the main sediment and this is formed mostly through the movement of water and deposition in water environments including any kind of streams and rivers, lacustrine, lakes and ponds, deltaic which is the, the river delta environments, mass movements which is gravity, wind which is aeolian like sand dunes and obviously in the deep marine environments. So this rock siltstone is similar to sandstone. Silt is a little smaller in grain size and forms in similar locations, including the continental shelf, shallow inland seas, fluvial, deltaic, but it has low energy and also includes glacial deposits. Then we have mudstone, which is formed from small clay particles, which is the smallest grain size, smaller than silt and sand, and is formed in similar ways through fluvial, lacustrine, deltaic, and tidal flats, but it has low energy environments due to the size of the grains and the sediment that is forming this rock. Then we have shale, which is similar to mudstone, which forms from clay and quartz particles and minerals, fine, thin fragments that are usually in flat layers. And these form in deeper marine environments, also river deltas, tidal flats, continental shelves, shallow inland seas, and some usually deep lakes, which is lacustrine. Next, we have limestone, again, another very common sedimentary rock formed from the remains of ocean or marine animals and the shells and the calcium carbonate. These form in certain environments, obviously deep lakes, lacustrine, shallow seas, continental shelves, deep marine environments and obviously this requires warmer seas due to the abundance of organic life to then deposit the calcium carbonate shells onto the environment. This next rock is dollar stone. It's very similar to limestone, similar family of variation, has both calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate as its composition. It is formed in a similar way to limestone and similar environments which include the deep lakes, shallow seas with low energy. Next is chert, which is a sedimentary rock made of mostly silicon dioxide, silica, and which involves lots of quartz and can also form within limestone beds or strata. And this chert is formed through anoxic environments with plate margins, connell shelves, and usually very deep ocean or deep marine environments, which is required because you need no other additional elements to add in to form the chert. And obviously an anoxic environment is required. Our next rock, chalk, is a white limestone variety, and if you find it, it means that it's formed from a certain environment, which includes any fluvial, river-based environments, shallow seas, continental shelves, any flood, any river deltas, and obviously deep marine environments. The next rock is gypsum, sedimentary rock. This is formed with high rates of evaporation, which infers a certain climate, low energy, shallow seas, or any kind of large lake or pond where you have a change to the environment which has increased evaporation and decreased precipitation and addition of water so that gypsum it is a precipitate mineral that forms a rock. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel which has all these videos on earth science.